Hi guys and welcome back to the channel on today's show. Well, it needs no introduction. Yes, we are going to talk about wave defense. Now, I'm going to actually give a big shout out here at the beginning to Jules Verne and Blue Mandal Ma 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 Blue Mandalorian. I will get his name right. Um, for all the information that they've gathered and the screen graphs that will be showed in this video today. Also, big shout out to Ultimate DJs, who's, um, yeah, whose Discord I did actually pinch this off, but I have put it in my own Discord, so we will be looking at those screen graphs. So big shout out to them off the top here. But if you want to know when I'm releasing videos, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. So, wave defense. Now, whether you like it or you hate it, it's one of these new things that we're having to do. And we're just gonna have a quick overview here from the patch notes, as you can see, dated the 5th of December, written up by somebody called Gabriel. Is that Eco's first name? I think it is. So we'll have a quick overview, and then we're gonna jump back into game, where we're gonna show you a few, a few things like the events and where to find them, give you a few ideas on strategies as well. And obviously we'll look at some of the graphs as well. So basically, this is another version of an Armada, but it's an Armada that has been completely flipped. Instead of you attacking this thing, no, you actually have to defend it. Now, in Armadas you can have, well, standard group Armadas, you can have up to seven ships depending on the level of your ACC. Obviously, most notably, the vast majority of players will either have five or six players that can join. It's only for those who are in the G5 and they actually have a level 50 ACC who can actually have the full seven. But you're only allowed to bring a single ship each. Now, you can bring support ships to buff and boost your ships, your alliance members as well, It's if you so wish. Um... But with this one, support ships really can take a back seat. There is one particular way that you can do this, but you do need to be very, very careful. Now, another thing as well, there are some pros and cons to this, and we will go through the cons first before we look at the uh, pros. So, I mean, you might end up seeing some of these intermingled. But let's have a quick uh, reminder of what they are. So basically, Section 31 have found these various two, these two different various labs. They've got their own safe house, and they've also got a Borg research lab. Now, these are two different strength um, defense points, which you must defend. Now, like I said, as I was going on about, and I just lost my train of thought, I guess I did, you can have up to seven players. Now, with these things, you can have five players actually, including yourself, so that's you and four buddies or four other people, because this is not just based on your alliance. We group of matters are, you, it's just your alliance, that is it. Uh, most, if you've got another alliance, um, different alliances, you're usually fighting over the same Amada. But for this, no, you're not, because PvP has been deactivated, so literally anyone can join. <laughs> yeah. These things are also just as good as formation of adders in the sense of organization. So if you've got an alliance who's not very well organized, you may find it a little bit tricky in some aspects to actually, you know, organize a, an effective attack force to actually complete the whole, the whole sequence. But if you are in an alliance that is very well organized and they do talk to each other quite a lot and say, right, we, we need this, we need that, you know, you do this, you do that. And it's not a case of, well, orders. It's a case of this is what we need to do to succeed. So you're going to have your experienced players, you're going to have your inexperienced players, and you're all going to work together nicely. That's an alliance-based one. Now, this one, no, it doesn't work that way. It is open to everybody so which means you could literally have players from different alliances now unless you're prepared to all talk to each other in galaxy chat because pm mean couldn't be very very much of a headache 
yeah, it's they're going to be very difficult to form an effective um, fighting force. And that's where we come into our first con is communication and organization of these things. It is very complex, at least with formation of matters. You can organize it. Who needs to be where to, to organize your power strengths and things like that. In your alliance chat, you can organize these new wave defenses in there. But then again, you could always start one and somebody jumps in. And that can be a problem. Now, you can message that player and tell them to F off. Or you can be polite about it and say, please, this is for our alliance only. Please, can you vacate so we can get everybody in? They may listen. Luckily, touch wood, I've had no problems with that. I have said, look, this is for our alliance. Please, could you leave the system? And they've left the system. Not a problem. But you are going to find players who literally just do not communicate no matter what you do. So you're kind of screwed. <laughs> yeah. So this is where the big problem is. And there's no form of like in-system communication for these things where it's just a, a closed network um, communication to actually talk to the relevant players in that alliance. So look, we need this uh, six o'clock, five o'clock, hostiles there, here, there and everywhere. So sadly, that is our first biggest con with this. Uh, well, biggest downfall with them. But like I said, there are two different versions of these. This one's the first one, which is a 40 to 60 um, facility. This is the section 31 safe house. So this, yeah. We're not going to go through everything. So this that's the most powerful one that there is. And then you've got the Borg Research Labs here at 30 to 50. Now, at the time of recording and the time of launch, this was very, very difficult for low-level 30 player um, ops, 30 play, or anyone in the low-level 30s. It was very difficult for you to actually complete these um, weaker ones because... Yeah, the, these hostiles have got some. They got some power behind them, um, but yeah, going for the higher ones. Yeah, you re for the other one, you really do need to watch out. But it is ideal more for like your G four and G five, G six players. Ideally, if you got a fleet of G six players, Jesus Christ, you might as well go take on the other one and you will walk it all over. But these also hostiles do actually put out a bit of a punch as well. So, now as you can see, it says it allows um, five commanders regardless of their alliance to team up. And like I said, yes, if you've got friends in other alliances, so if you have one of these like cooperative super alliances where it's like multiple different alliances, maybe you can actually work together on that. Now, another way of getting around the communication problem with this one is Discord and using the voice, uh, the voice chat in your discords if you are comfortable using that if not by all means just join it and listen to what everyone else says and where they want you obviously if you're not very comfortable with using it you're not going to turn around and say yeah we've got a hostile at six o'clock and can somebody kill it um but that by the by so what you're going to find is you're going to find various targets coming from these and these will be displayed as well in the charts as well so now just to watch out for these bot, uh, the bottom two, <laughs> yeah, the bottom two, and um, blah, 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 blah. oh, it's not there, but there is a third one. Is the Herogen Hunters? They are in here, so you are going to require specialty ships. In fact, you're going to require specialty ships for the Borg, the Swarm, and the Actians as well. So, but like I said, we will discuss them in the um, graphic section. So for starting it then, basically, your ships must, must be docked. If it's not docked, you will not be able to jump it. And then there's going to be a 10-minute timer, which only the leader can actually operate. Um, now, there is a button there to obviously start the uh, Marder off um, straight away, as soon as possible. So you don't have to necessarily wait the full 10 minutes. Obviously, the longer you wait, the more chance that um, someone else is going to jump in and ruin the organization that you've actually done. So just be aware of that one. If you are going to start this as an alliance, make sure you and all four of the other players that are joining you are ready to go because there is no notifications on this one. This is the second 
problem with this. There is absolutely zero notifications in game to tell you that your alliance's status because obviously, goes without saying, this is a regardless of alliance event. So just be aware of that. There's nothing even in Galaxy Chat to say like, Admiral Pegasus has started a fleet, uh, a wave defense. Would you want to help him? Obviously a lot of, probably some players on my server would just turn around and tell me to F off and you do it yourself. So, but I'm sure I'd end up getting some players come and join me anyway. Um, now, once it has begun, obviously the system does become locked, so there's no way to warp in and out the system. You can, in that 10 minute timing, you can recall your ships, should you so wish. And this is where the first tactic comes in, involving a specialty ship. Now, if you actually watched Rev Juice's videos, or you've been listening to Ultimate DJ, I'm sure you are aware which, um, there, which support ship that actually is. Now we will we will mention that. So obviously, if you want to drop it in the comment section down below, please feel free to drop it. Don't forget to like the video as well if you are going to find it informative. So what you're going to face, you're going to face ten waves, and you are going to when for each wave that you complete, you are going to get a certain amount of credits, which is going to bring us onto our first graph. Now, I've come into my Discord here because I have put some of these graphs into Discord. And if you'll find under the Amada section, I have the uh, Wave Defense. Now, again, if you do have additional screen graphs that's not contained within this, please drop them in um, the game chat section and we will um, endeavor to get them out. Now, if I've actually uploaded it, here it is. So what you're going to find is you've got the, obviously the two ones, you've got the Borg Research Lab and you've got the um, the hostile, uh, so the covert base. Obviously you've got the list of hostiles on the side. They are primarily aimed at the Borg Research. So what you're going to find is you're going to get Section 31 credits, which you will be able to spend in a th Section 31 um, Faction Store, which we will quickly look at. But as you can see, um, thanks to Jules Verne and Blue, Mandal Blue Mandalorian, we have a running tally in the total credits section. So how much you will actually get. Now you'll find that they do go up every three levels or so. So you've got one to three, which will top out at 390. So you can walk away from that one with 550 credits. If, however, you manage to go past that and go up to like wave six, obviously wave four will drop down the number of credits that you actually get. But again, it starts building up again to 590. So now for wave, if you complete all six waves, you're going to get just under 1500 um, section of 31 credits. Going all the way up to wave 10, again, as you can see, wave 7 drops low and then it builds up again. So if you manage to complete all 10 waves, you are just under 4000 credits. And there you go, there's Blue Mandalorian and Jules Verne's name at the bottom there. But so you will get all them. Now, obviously, if you've actually been watching the screen as it's been rolling, the cov covert base as well has the running tally as well as the actual each for credits for each one. So again, that one can top out at 6,715. So now in the system, you'll find, um, I'm not quite sure. Here we go. Why did I just do that earlier? <laughs> this save me scrolling. So what you're gonna find is that this is kind of your layout. This is obviously one of the Borg systems. And yep, shout out to DJ here. This was a screenshot from his game when the game froze out. So you can see various different hostiles. You got your swarm, Borg, or Action in the green. So you can see there's three levels then. And then you've got your FKR hostiles in the red circles. Now, also watch out for those yellow ones, those little shits there. Yeah, those little frackers there. Because they're mighty fast, but they're incredibly weak. 303 power, that is it. That's that's way less than my fortune at tier one. <laughs> but these things are wickedly fast and will come flying through. Now, another um, a tactic here I'm going to throw in at this particular point is if you do have a weak player in your fleet, get them to go after these. 
Just get them to go after the, concentrate on them while the bigger boys deal with the FKRs and the specialty ships as well. So, just uh, as you can see, uh, no, the screenshot was taken while the game was broken. So, but that's that one. Now, um, what we've got coming up next, we've got, oh, we've got another chart here, which tells you how many hostiles you can expect. Again, this is in my Discord. Let's just zoom in quickly onto this one. So this is the first one. It's the Borg behind me. So just as an FYI, it tells you what level you've, um, they are, what, how many of them are actually coming in, and the clock position. Yes, the clock position. So... Watch out for that one. And then obviously as you can see it's only a small fleet. And then suddenly you've got wave two. Boom. Now here behind me I believe is the. If I could just move me. Yep is the, is the surveys. So as you can see. Um, they don't start coming into wave two. And you've got one. There's two. There's three. The three. And it gets forever up as you go further and further into this. So like I say, this is in my Discord. It is also in DJ's Discord as well. Not quite sure about revs just yet though. So now, here we go. These are your waves. So this one is for the Borg Research Lab. Now I haven't got the cover base one because I didn't see them. Maybe there was on there, but they just weren't loading up. So what you're gonna find then, these are the positions that you're gonna get for wave one. Yeah, so. You're going to need, so what you're going to see is you've got your Franklin, your Talios, and your Mantis. So your Franklin is dealing with your Swarm Hostiles, your Talios is dealing with the Borg, and the Mantis is also dealing with the Actians. Now the Actians coming in this are actually Explorers. So yes, you could actually send a Battleship Warship at these if you so wish, but there's not actually going to be that many come flying in. At most, you might find about four. That's the most I've ever seen. Maybe there's higher in the high levels, but I'm not quite sure. But that's what you'll pretty much find is five of these specialties come, uh, four of these specialties coming in at one time. And then obviously you've got your FKRs in the other three zones. Now, battle triangle is going to be key. So please make sure that you're aware of that. Wave two then, this is where you're going to see the um, surveys coming in. So as you can see, pretty much everything is still in the same place with the fact that the surveys coming in at three or six o'clock. So just bear that in mind. So uh, we're not scored completely out. There we go. So move, get rid of that one. And then we'll go to the next one, which is wave three. Now you can see some changes happen. The factions have moved. The hostiles have ret rotated anti-clockwise anti-clockwise so maybe that could be the way it works the fkrs have also rotated anti-clockwise however the survey has moved over to one o'clock yes that's the way it comes in from so just be aware of that one like i said if you've got specialty ships running around obviously the talios could come in and deal with this while the posts are dealing with the federation could be just, you know, concentrating on wiping out all those Federation ships. So, obviously, Wave 4 is going to be next. As you can see, more anti-clockwise rotation again. But this time, you're going to get two levels, uh, two sets of SWAT, uh, blah, 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 survey ships coming in. At 2 o'clock and at half past 4. Half past 4. So, just bearing in mind, so, again, maybe the Mantis player, it, once he's got rid of the Actians... Uh, could be a six one half a dozen the other whether he's going to get to him in time because like i said they are wickedly fast they will take about 20 seconds to get from the edge of the system 20 to 30 seconds to get from the edge of the system to the center so you do need to be fast maybe just the players who are dealing with the fkrs might come in or if you've got a spare straggler um say like the talios player has got rid of his quickly. He can come in and f get the one at two o'clock. The Franklin guy could come in and get the ones at half past four. M then the Mantis guy can just try and get in if he can. There is no harm in two or more players going after the same hostile to make sure that somebody kills the little shite. Okay, so if there is more of you chasing, uh, chasing do not worry. 
if more of you actually go after the same hostile. So wave five then. Now this is roughly the average that we've got to in my alliance. There have been odd occasions where we have actually reached wave 10. So, uh, but a lot of alliances also are reaching wave 10 and doing these quite easily. So again, they've taken another anti-clockwise rotation. So this is gonna be the key. Remembering the fact you're rotated anti-clockwise by one six, just one six. So now you've got the, swar uh, the surveys coming in at three and five o'clock. So again, this could be a little bit problematic for the Franklin guy dealing with. So maybe the Mantis and Talios will come in for support as they get closer, once, the, once they've dealt with their hostiles. And to be perfectly honest, you've actually probably got more of a chance of taking out these hot, the surveys before going after your specialty ships. Frankly, not so much because you're in the same sector, but again, if there's four of them coming in, you might not actually be able to do it. So it is a case of just trial and error and see what happens and how quick. But again, things can change every single time. So just bear that in mind. Wave six then, we'll see the surveys change to 10 and 12. And again, oh, and this time you've got four and eight. So now you're getting more surveys coming in. <sighs> Whoa. Four batches of them, yeah. Now, usually this is the point where you are starting to lose players badly, yeah. So unless you've got those high level players, you could actually be potentially losing players bad quite fast. So you'd literally be like, can we do this? And you're pretty much gonna be, you, there's, there's an 80% chance you're, the, the, target you're defending is going to start taking some heavy damage by now because you're struggling to get on top of them but again if, if you are quick and you're quick into it not a particular problem um so just bear that in mind so next up then so we've done five and six now we're coming on to number seven we're back down to two surveys but again we have we rotated again i'm not quite sure if we rotated um so you're down to two levels of swarms. You've got 11 o'clock and half past seven. Um, but yeah, so again, it's just watching where it is. So you pretty much anticipating where the hostiles are coming from all the time. And by the looks of it, no, we're actually rotating backwards for freight, uh, for wave eight. Um, as we now see uh, three sets of surveys at 10, half past, uh, half past 12. And half past two. So, right, so let's get rid of that. So let's just jump back a second. So Talios there, Talios there, Talios, Talios. Oh yeah, so there we go. So frame two, so wave one, wave two. Um, okay, so. Yeah, it's all rotating anti-clockwise and there we go. So from wave seven, by the looks of it, we are, yeah, wave seven, we're going back around. So these are the final two waves. I'm not going to zoom in. You can clearly see what they are. Surveys coming in from half past nine, half past two and half past four on wave nine. Surveys coming in on wave 10 at two o'clock, half past four, half past six and half past eight. So by now, if you've got any players left fighting, you're doing absolutely awesome. You've got a damn good chance of at least getting some decent amount of credits. Now, like I said, they add just the Borg research. So here we go. These are the uh, circles, as you can see, we've got the hostiles. So it's already telling you where to go for the specific, the specific hostiles. Here's the FKRs. And this is literally one, two, uh, 10. So yeah. If you want to take a copy of these and put it in your alliance in your alliance Discord for their viewing purposes, by all means, copy them and take them over. Um, are we going? And then this will be the section thirty ones. As you can see, you've got voyages and you need the monovine as well on this one. So the the specialty ships here have switched. So do not worry about swarms and actians and. Borg in this particular section but again as you can see 
And you've also got the number of faction ships that you're going to end up facing uh, going through this as well. So that's it. So that's the graphics. Let's jump into game and show you where to find these things and have a quick look at the events. Okay, so the events first then, as you can see, we're in the Season Passes um, tab of the events. And what you're going to find is five Wave Defense and the events that keeps cropping up every single day. Just resets itself every single day, which is literally go in and blow up to three waves. That's it. That's all you need to get to. Just the third wave. That is it. Complete the third wave. Jobs are good and Bob's your uncle, fan is your aunt, and you're going to complete this. As you can see, 100 points for each wave or not, so that's all you're going to need. Um, what's then, what are they going to do? Uh, watch out, because sometimes there might be five. Just watch out, there sometimes might be five. But again, at the time of recording, this is a battle pass. So if, after, if you're actually viewing it after December 2023, you're not going to see all this. We do have an elite line, which is $20 as the cheap version. Yay. Which is going to give you a whole load of ciphers because uh, you are going to need these section one ciphers to start these, um, well, to even join these wave defenses as well. As you can see, you can hold up to a thousand of them, so and you'll collect them from the faction store, which we'll again we'll look at. So you're going to find some various things. You're going to get um, some shards for Sloan as well, who is our new fleet commander. Yay! We had a look at him during the live stream, but. I'm not going all out to get him in all honesty. I get him. I get him. I'm focused on actually getting the research because there's a couple of other bits in there that I actually want first. So as you can see, a lot of things. You also want to get these building materials, of the section one transmitters. These are for the building that you will need. You will need. So we'll quickly look at that as well. Okay, I forgot to put this little section in. This is the building. As you can see, it's the facade. It's next to the um, Astronautics um, Studio, which is to the left of your R&D station. So it's it's sort of like at the 10, 11 o'clock. And these are the material buildings. As you can see, you're going to get them from the Section 31 Faction Store, which we will just put in here because I forgot to even record that section as well. Typical me. Um... So you will need these transmitters to complete this build. You can get from the store as well. But if you also look at the extra bonuses, you've got some weapon damage as well. With, uh, weapon, wave defense damage, which I'm not quite sure what level that actually opens at. Perhaps you can drop that in the comment section down below if you know. Um, hull health bonus, off stat bonus, and um, amount mad countdown speed ups. Now these are bonus things that you're going to be able to get from the faction store which we'll go into now um, which will um, increase uh, decrease the amount of time you need towards the armada so as you can see it's down here at the bottom of your faction stores so starting off you've got the ciphers as you can see maximum 1000 but you can claim one every single day section 31 reputation would recommend that you do the uh, double pull every single day um, a chart I have seen, but I've not managed to f um, find a raw copy of the graph yet. Is showing that if you do the double pull every single day, you could potentially max this faction out in 126 days. It's yeah, fast. Uh, so, interesting things in here as you can see, you've got um, Sloan the Fleet Commander, he's got his own skill points actually in here. Uh, some dolomite particles, some more transmitters for your building. As you can see, they are opening at various levels. Uh, faction reputation, syndicate XP, which is one thing that I really, really, really do want. Adding that to the already five and a half thousand I've already got. Strike teams has also been added into here. The full sets, so chance to really um, level them up instead of waiting for incursions to come around. As you can see, all three sets there. Carol Freeman, and then a number of favours as well. So if we actually quickly look at the favours, as you can see, um, several different ones. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So you got is that Hepatitis, uh, which increases your hull health. These are all aimed at the wave defence, so these will not benefit your ships in any other way, shape or form. 
except for the defense but obviously you will need to get at least an infiltrator to get the hermes which is the bot one unlocks the ability to quick start armadas so if we just click on the i button if we can just get that little thing there you go it's only the one not going to give you a, a power boost or anything so that's going to be an an awesome thing for players to actually get but then obviously when you reach an analyst you're going to start unlocking the rest of them um agent uh, infiltrator you get the solst operation solstice which is increasing isolated damage against wave def uh, while in a wave defense so by means check these out at your heart's content so let's go jump back to where i was in the video and carry on so that's the battle pass and if we click over to the events tab when it loads up and we scroll across to when it stops freezing out it's gonna go freezing again oh the joys wave defense events so you're gonna find this tab here you're gonna have different events coming up here from solo leaderboards to alliance leaderboards and solo milestones now this particular sms does change quite a lot as you can see this one is about defeating waves so this one i've got to complete wave five to complete but there are also um, events where you have to destroy the hostiles in there now watch out because i made a big boogie on this one some of them actually specify the classification of ship you need so like an explorer or an interceptor you can have you can have two so read the description very carefully because i was fighting with two battleships i was wondering why i wasn't scoring so i ended up taking the talios in to actually do some work for me um now you, the, in all honesty out the specialty ships for that first one the talios is going to be a little bit more versatile than the other two so just bear that in mind but again it goes on the strength of your specialty ship whether how versatile it's going to be so um so you've got that particular event and that's it for the um events what's going to come after the arc i do not know probably no events there's not going to be much in incentive incentivizing on it so we have these here as you can see this bottom one oh for crying out loud okay since i decided to cock up i'm gonna have to reload the game but what i thought would we'll just jump straight back into here and carry on with this so here's the credits let's get past it because i know for a fact there is additional things in here so like these so as you can see here this first one is the new icons we've got so this green one is obviously uh, is means that the wave defenses are ready to start you're going to see these pretty much um in every single system in there <coughs> again once we get the game loaded back up properly i'll show you the systems next up is going to be the wave defense has a leader and is waiting for more commanders which is the blue plus sign which is fine but again like i said that's re that's relying on play other players from other alliances or your own alliance to notice there's one actually running. Again, we'll have a look at that in game. Next up um, is a party is looking for additional commanders. So this is like one that's nearly ready to go, but we just need that extra player to come along. So yeah, it's very rare you'll actually see that exclamation mark. So don't worry too much. Now, when a wave defense is started, that's it. The system is closed. It's locked. Red sign. You cannot enter. That is it. So do not even try. You can try if you want to, but yeah. And the final one is if you are destroyed and you're and your guys, the wave is still going on, you can actually observe. So you will be able to observe that particular system about how it, how well it's going and support your team. It goes, yeah, come on. Yeah, you know. But anyway. Okay, so we don't need to worry about those last little bits. So here we go, we're reloading the game up. And yeah, hopefully this scrolling is going to actually start working. And it depends on if the game's actually going to load. Are we going to load? 96, come on, here we go. Bloody hell. Here we go, we're finally in. So I'm not editing that bit, I'm leaving that in. So, oh, look, you can see my ball cube in the distance there. So yeah it's tier six 
shouldn't have really taken it above tier 5 until I got all the materials I needed to go tier 7. So, if we jump out and get rid of that, get rid of that. So, where are you going to find these systems? Well, to be honest, they are just north of territory. So, what you're going to find here then is you're going to find these particular systems. So, as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five Amadas already in progress. Yes, honey? Right, okay, then back to bed. You sleep, but just put, press play and sleeping music. Just stick it there, I'll take it down with me. Right. Good night. Dad. Off you go. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I will. I'll come and get you up at half six. Come on. And then the rest are all green. So which basically means these are all ready to go. Now these are the low level ones. So these are the ones that ideally you should be able to do from ops 30 and up. <laughs> yeah, okay, low level 30s will struggle. So there you go. So Cornwell's just ended up going blue. So that means that one's waiting for commanders. Now if we actually click on this, as you can see, it says a wave defense is going on. And it's going to give you the hostiles that's in that particular system which is ex battleships, explorers, interceptors, and surveys, obviously. And the rewards, here you go, is all the wave uh, payouts. So if you've got an idea particularly what wave you want to go for, try and work your strategies around that. You can shade the coordinates as well in Galaxy Chat and Alliance Chat, should you wish. So they, just bear that in mind. So we're going to check the system out. So as you can see, Join the defense in this region. So this basically means we've got a commander in there who's already start who's already started a murder and he's waiting for players to actually join. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be we're just gonna do a random here. So as you can see, my Talios is turned blue. Um I will need to move my crew over on the mantis because we're gonna send the mantis in. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna run a bog standard. Um, hostile crew which is not a problem whatsoever you can run them um, and that, to be honest that's ideally what you should run strange new worlds crew should you want to as well I would highly recommend them um, Nero and we're gonna need an attack so who have I got behind me I got Gorkin so we'll put Gorkin in there there we go so that's the mantis fully crewed and obviously to bring the mantis in i'm going to do this one and bring it in so the um tag at the top then you're going to see now from left to right is the number of players already in it so here we've got four or five the number of ships you have two of two so that's basically mean me i've got two ships the leader who in this case is going to be gel so big shout out to gel for for running this on running this one He's not messaged me telling me to F off yet, so I'm guessing he doesn't mind me joining. And then you've got your timer. Now, the timer is the countdown. As you can see, both my ships are in blue, so they are ready to go. So, by the looks of this as well, we've actually got a few different other players in here. All actually allies of me, with the exception of this one down the bottom here. So, oh, here we go. So, we've just got another player... Uh, jumped in so like I said this is just basically random players coming in so now save me putting my hand over the screen I will continue talking as we go through this if he's going to start quick I'm just going to turn the camera off for now but I will keep talking as we as I explain what's going on because obviously you don't want my hand over the camera while I'm actually um, trying to fight these little buggers off so we'll actually just wait for him to start the Amada. Because um, what will happen is when he does start the Amada, here we go, it started. So let's get the camera off and let's get going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll out and I'm going to have a look. So I've got a couple of interceptors here. So these are going to be Swarm. Um, there's my targets for my Mantis. So I'm going to go straight after them and the Talios ones. Uh, down here so this is wave one 
obviously I don't quite know how this is going to pan out with everyone because this looks like this 39 is just sign uh, just sitting there. Um, as you can see, uh, the name is also changed at the top to Defend, telling us that the uh, it's obviously going on. So I'm just going to pop me targets here. And so this, and then obviously because we're sh really struggling, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move... Uh, there's not not much way in the way of actually other players going after things. Now these swarm do look relatively weak, so I'm going to go after them. At least clear them up. I don't know what that 38 is doing. It just seems to be sat there. Um. So yeah, I to be honest, I oh, I don't think we're actually going to get much assistance off anyone else. So that's a federation, federation hostile. So I'll go and neck him, and that's me done. So now I know where I need. To, oh, hello. Have I, have I missed one? Oh, okay. I don't understand what happened there. So now I know for a fact I'm going to need the Talios over here, and I'm going to need the Mantis um over here. So as you can see, the Explorers are already coming in for wave two. It is case basically a case of um. Making sure that you can go um, get the hostiles as fast as possible. So, no, this or this one. So, oh, idiot. So, I want to be down here, really. So, not remembering my graphs very well there, am I? So, the Mantis is already engaged. So, you're getting a rough idea of how long these things take. So, that 38 is now actually double fighting. So there we go. He's going out straight after the swarm. He is the weakest player in here, so it would kind of make sense the fact he would go after the swarm, uh, the swerves for us. But again, this has not been organised by anyone. So here we go. The Actians, uh, the swarms now are getting stronger. So I'm now just going to send my ships in to help clear up. And I don't think this is going to last too long though, because. Um, Let's get let's put it on Battle Bridge. Hostiles are getting through. There's not much organization. There's no way to communicate with each other other than um private messaging. As you can see, my mantis is taking heavy damage, so it's not gonna last very long in this fight whatsoever. So now now the clock should have switched for wave three. So now I'm going to send my ships. Yep, so the act, act is at the bottom there. And here's the Borg. So just go after them. As you can see, these Actian instigators are getting stronger. Look at that wave of battleships over here. What's that? They're the Romulan intruders. He's easily going to breach the lines and get in at the... Um, at the target there i'm talking too much so <laughs> now the defend the central um base will defend itself with some firepower as much as it can but again it's going up against targets on its own it really really does need you to help <clears throat> now because there's nobody attacking these battleships yet it looks like this 46 is coming over to help us um, but I really do not think we're gonna we're gonna survive this in one piece, whatsoever. But now nah, here, here we go. So they're already coming in, and so I'm not gonna be able to deal with all of them at once. So I'm, I'm just gonna go after. Oh no, my mantis is now gone. So that's it now. Mantis is out. As you can see, the base is trying to defend itself, but it is taking some damage. So there we go. So completed three waves, and that's it. That's the um, battle pass session actually completed. Um, apparently, we've still got five players, but this 39 is yet to move. If this 39 had actually moved its ass, it would actually stand a flipping chance. But alas, it won't. So here we go. So we've got four Borg hostiles coming in. I'm going to go after them and deal with them. 
But to be perfectly frank, there's not a lot we're going to do with this 39 not moving. Now, there is a chance, as much as I slated him just now, there's a chance his game has crashed because we are experiencing a lot of technical difficulties with these um, with these waves. So he could be just basically unable to fight or unable to get into the game. So now you'll also notice across the top as well as much as we still got five players. Mine now says one or two. That's how many ships I've got because obviously you saw I did lose the Mantis. And here we go. So the station is now under attack. If I, if I can at least get that last ball probe, I will be happy because there's no way in hell the Starbase is going to survive this. So whoever that 39 is, if he's off the same alliance as Gelf is, I'll let Gelf give him an earful. Because obviously, not my problem. I've just joined this as part of the video. So there we go. So we are going to lose. Let's get the camera back on. So, oh, there we go. So as you can see, the base is gone. That's it. Base is now gone. So we're going to get kicked out of the system. You have got to be joking me. You have got to be joking me. Oh my God, the base is still there. Oh my Lord. Uh, there are Actians. Um, there's the ones that I want. Oh my God, I can't believe we're actually holding on. But I guarantee the base is not going to survive this. So I'm just going to basically go out and kill as many as I can here. Um, so he's got the other Borg. And then he really could have done with going after this. I'm actually curious who that 39 is because... It's rather annoying the fact he's just sat there. It is really annoying. You can see how much damage that base has got on it. It's, it's on fire. It's literally on fire. So, but I'm sure that 38 will also want to be kicking off. So, we, we, oh, there we go. So, I'm dead. So, just to quickly then, while the base is under attack, as you can see, uh, Cornwell there has got the eye symbol on it, which means I can actually look in there as well. So it looks like there's another alliance, uh, another ad going on, but we're not going to go join that one. So that is it. There are tactics around this. Now, there is another ta strategy, which I did say that we'll mention in this video, which is the support ship. There you go, got 705 credits. So thanks very much. I ought to message him and say thank you very much. Um, for, let, for not kicking me out of that one. But if at the start, send your Titan in. Now, it can be one of your five players. Okay, it can be one of your five players. Sends the Titan in and uses the max buff. The max fortification. Boost all available ships in there. Recall the Titan... Recall the Titan and then change it over quickly for a combat ship. Now, ideally, the leader could do this. That way, they've got control of the timer. So once you've got all five ships in there, get them buffed. Obviously, you can only buff your own alliance. That's it. So ideally, that's ideal for an, when your own alliance is doing it and you're in that alliance one. If it's multiple different alliances there, I mean, they we had at least three alliances because I had a caution on one of them, I had nothing on the other, and I had hearts on the other. So I had three different um, diplomatic statuses, so at least three alli four alliances in there. Four alliances. <coughs> so the Titan would not be very effective, because at most, it's just going to buff me. That's it. So, yeah. So if you are in alliance, Titan. If you're going in with other people, other alliances, don't even bother. Because you're just wasting Titan juice. Or unless you want it to finish your dailies. So. But that's the waves. An interesting concept. I do like it. I really, really do like it. But it's a pain in the ass to organise. But then again. Scopely don't do anything. That's not such a pain in the ass. So let's collect me rewards here. Before we um, zoom out. Whee! We got 3,000. Oh, yeah, that's protect the entity. So that's the, yes, that's the actual SMS. Um, and say, Doctor Who buggers off. There we go. There's the battle pass. 
so I can go claim the next level should I want to. But anyway, let me know what you think about wave defense. Is it something that you actually enjoy doing? Or is it a pain in the ass? But again, is the communication thing a massive problem? Or are you experiencing massive amount of lag and games crashing left, right and center? Yeah. Only Scopely could launch a decent feature, a decent activity in the game, and screw it up. Yeah. Trust Scopely. Anyway, I'm Admiral Pegasus. This is Pegasus Show. Thank you for joining me. Do not forget to smash the like button on your way out. Hit the join button for membership should you wish to help the channel. Or you can donate to link, uh, one of the donation links, which is in the description down below. Also, don't forget to drop your comments. I do read all the comments. Hence the reason why you keep seeing a thumbs up, keep cup popping up on them. Especially if I do actually like it. And if I really, really do like it, I do put the hearts on them. And if I do feel that they need a reply, I will reply as well. Don't forget to come and join the Discord as well. The link for Discord is in the description of this video as well. But until then, thanks for joining me. Stay safe, live long, prosper, and I shall catch you on the next video. Goodbye.